I love the story of Jonah and the whale. Now I realize that technically the great fish is not necessarily a whale, but because we just happen to conveniently have a whale here at the edge of nowhere, well, I'm going to say it's a whale and be done with it. And don't worry, Joe, I've got coffee with me, so. Although there may be some technical difficulties with this video, I'm comfortable with it. I had actually thought I might make this video earlier. I had discovered that Nico Cocelli, who has some other beautifully illustrated books for children, but they were for children of 77, had an edition of the Book of Jonah. And I ordered it not from St. Vlad's, but I think St. John's in uh, Western Orthodox Monastery. Anyway, it, it took a while to get here. And I missed the first possible date. The uh, Oriental churches, both Latin Rite and Greek Rite, have, um, have uh, Jonah Fast, or sometimes called Nineveh Fast the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before either Septuagesima Sunday or Cheese Week. And it didn't come in time for Septuagesima. I'll put a link to Coachelli's books in Amazon because they'll come quicker. And also, uh, whoever I ordered it from, I think it was St. John's. I only had this one, not the others. And he has some other beautiful books. And you are probably familiar with the story of Jonah. And conveniently, it came up in as the in the gospel <laughs> for uh, the book. Jonah's not the gospel for for Ember uh, Wednesday and Lent, but Jesus talking about the sign of Jonah is the reading um, for Ember Wednesday and Lent. So it gave me it gave me a good excuse to. Uh, Post this video now. Now the book of Jonah is a, a short book. He is one of the minor prophets. That might be one of the reasons I like him so much. And you can pause and pinch and zoom and read the whole book uh, if you'd like. Uh, and, you know the centerpiece, and I love the way it's laid out here because the centerpiece, of course, is the the cry of distress from Jonah. And uh, it is particularly useful, I think, during Lent, where I often feel that I am cast into the deep, well, this happens other times, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from their presence. How shall I again look to thy holy temple? Well, I don't want to read all of that. You can pause it if you want to. But just remind you that you, you know, kind of what's going on in the story of, of Jonah. He is called to go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For thy wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah didn't go to Nineveh. He tried to go away from Nineveh, paid the fear to, to the fare to go to Tarshish. And, uh, you know, it often seems to me that what should be prophets mourning the great cities of this perverse and, uh, and faithless generation, well, we don't. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. And there was a mighty tempest. And Jonah said, oh, I know what this is about. It's because I am disobeying God. And they were afraid and they threw him into the sea. But the Lord had appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And Jonah prayed that wonderful prayer that I mentioned earlier from the belly of the whale. And he was cast forth onto dry land. Hmm. 
How does this whale compare to our whale? I've not met many whales up close in Nashville. So, anyway, Jonah prays not for Nineveh, but for himself, and he has uh, cast out onto the land, and he says, oh, I'll do what you told, tell me if you don't turn me into a whale turd, so to speak. And so, the word of the Lord comes to Jonah again, and he goes to Nineveh, And he says, repent. And the tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And the people of Nineveh did repent. And God repented the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Now, one might expect Noah would be, I mean, would be just happy as a lark, right? He'd done what the Lord told him to do. The people had repented, but oh no. Jonah is an awful lot like a lot of us. It displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. He said, I knew that they would repent, and uh, they wouldn't get what they deserve. I am reminded very much of how we disregard the uh, colic for Ash Wednesday. O Lord, thou hatest nothing that thou hast made and desirest not the, the death of the sinner. But we often wish for the death of those that we consider sinners. So Jonah went out of the city and made a booth for himself and he sat under the shade so he would see what would become of the city. And the Lord God appointed a plant I like King James, it says gourd. And it made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when the dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm, which attacked the plant so that it withered. And then God appointed a sultry east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he said, it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, you pitied the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And here comes perhaps my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle. The end. Well, simple story. Uh, we're reminded in the, in the preface that there's an awful lot of uh, fancy commentary available. I recently was reading... Uh, Maximus Confessor's multiple page after page of interesting commentary on Jonah and uh, there is a lot there and yet well sometimes one needs to uh, to accept the the stories of Christ as a little child if one wishes to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jonah slept there.